The shoot went well yesterday. We were definitely pressed for time just because it was daylight savings, which I had no idea it was daylight savings. Like I just fully thought I had woken up a little earlier than I normally do. And honestly, looking back, we had like so many different styles to get through. So we didn't get all of the shots that I wanted, but I feel like we got a decent amount. After I finished studying LSAT today, I definitely need to go through and start building stuff on the website for the for that one for that drop and i think i also want to put together like a post kind of explaining the cultural significance of the salad style all of the designs that we drop we really do try to be very intentional about it and make sure that it's like rooted in the culture and rooted in designs that you could actually see on the streets of mauritania and so I really just want to make sure like that comes across, you know, on our social media and on our website. Fun things, I really love this part of the brand and just like the aspect of launches, like creating the content and just writing kind of about the story and the process is honestly my one of my favorite parts and aspects of everything. Like the creative stuff is really where I thrive. I don't do this hijab style often at all, but I feel like my friend Loki inspired me. I did like the little wraparound moment. Just a little more full coverage. I am in desperate need of coffee, so I'm going to go to a coffee shop to study some LSAT. Is it better to speak or to die? You seem to know more than anybody else around here. Well, if you only knew how little I know about the things that matter. What things that matter? Today is election day. I just remember how much anxiety that I had last election season. Like, I just remember it dragging out so long last time. And I think I vlogged that entire election week and just like my thoughts as I was processing everything. But I just have no anxiety when it comes to the election this year because I feel like it's just really hard to feel invested in and feel connected to this election cycle when it's like both sides support the genocide like both of the major candidates support the genocide and it's just really hard i feel like to feel invested in american politics in general knowing that your government and your political system directly supports an ongoing genocide and it's like there are a lot of difficult conversations that are being had online when it comes to that and when it comes to this entire election and it's like I think with all of these conversations, like it's important to remember that like things are not black and white and this is not a simple conversation. And like, I think too, like there's just been a lot of takes when it comes to voting this year that have just tried to like simplify the choices and narrow down like this entire election to a choice between the lesser of two evils. I think that there needs to be more nuance in the conversation than just simply picking the lesser of two evils. You know, whatever happens this week, it's not gonna be good. I feel like for my own sanity this year, I've definitely tapped out of things quite a bit and like I'm just not really heavily looking at the polls and everything, but I think this is gonna be a very interesting election cycle um, to say the least. As someone who lives in California, like there are so many privileges that come with living in California and knowing that if a Trump presidency is to come, like I am fortunate enough that like a lot of the rights that may be rolled back aren't going to be as harsh and aren't going to affect me as much as other people in other states. There is a lot of concern for all of the ramifications, the repercussions that a Trump presidency is going to have for other people living in other states and then also just like things like the supreme court and all of that so obviously those are like concerns and worries that i personally definitely have i just feel like in general i'm kind of tired of american politics and i'm just kind of tired of like the direction that we've been going in these past few years even when it just comes to like the rhetoric and things like in the media and how political opponents are speaking to each other I feel like politics have just got become so nasty like putting aside everything that's happening like globally in the US's role in the Middle East like even just on like a smaller scale there's just been so much 
that's been really disappointing about domestic American politics. There's been so much polarization and divisiveness and I feel like it has been kind of making like younger voters at least like a little bit jaded. That's what I've kind of noticed. Like I just get this sense that a lot of younger voters are just so jaded and don't feel like they have faith anymore in the two-party system. So it's going to be interesting to say the least to see how like the ramifications of that on this you know election cycle and I really do think that there's going to be a lot learned from this election cycle. I think that there are going to be major changes and I hope there are major changes to both parties but especially the Democratic Party with regards to like actually listening to the American people and what the American people want. I'm trying my best to not be monitoring the polls and like tracking the election too closely and I've also just like lowered my expectations in terms of like the election results coming out because as we saw in 2020, like it takes a minute, especially with like all of the ballots counting in, counting all of those mail-in ballots and everything. So I have honestly no expectations in terms of like the results coming through this week, but it is definitely going to be a very anxious time and an anxious week. So I think it's important to just do your best to take care of yourself and to know that whatever happens, like we, it's everything, things are going to be okay. But I'm going to go study at the public library because the public library is very peaceful and it's a vibe, especially if you get a table by the windows. I'm going to have lunch here and then I have some errands that I got to run afterwards. It's going to be a productive Tuesday. Also, yesterday was my first time wearing my hijab in this like a wraparound style. I'm low-key obsessed, like especially with the salad ones. I don't know what it is and I feel like the combination of like the colder weather, I've been, I've been really obsessed with the way this looks. Definitely come a long way because if you told me even like three months ago that I would wear my hijab like this, I would have called you crazy. I fully forgot that today was election day so I could not find any parking at the library. When I tell you I was circling and circling trying to find a parking spot so I ended up just coming to Capital One Cafe because they're open late and they're also really really nice here. It's funny because originally I was like should I just go to Capital One Cafe instead of going to the library and I should have listened to myself like sometimes you just gotta listen to your instincts. wrong the election results did come in last night i'm honestly so surprised at how quickly the results came in last night it looks like it was a complete landslide to be honest i'm not surprised i'm honestly not surprised i really did see this coming and it's unfortunate because i do wholeheartedly believe that the next four years there is a darker america on the horizon and things in this country are gonna get a lot worse but at the same time i know that this is the price of being complicit in and funding genocide and no matter how difficult no matter how bad things get here it will never be as bad as what's happening in palestine and in gaza i think it's a huge whiplash moment for a lot of people and i hope it really does send a message that when you turn your backs on certain communities of color that's gonna have consequences. You're not always guaranteed the vote of certain communities of color. If you actually want the vote of communities of color, you have to earn it. What's really disappointing and really scary is the fact that, you know, not only is the presidency gonna be run by Trump, but then also the Senate and the House of Representatives are both, both have a Republican majority, at least is what it looks like. Supreme Court is already currently on a 6-3 swing. So in that sense, it's kind of like a blank check moment which I think is really scary. I think there's a lot of rights on the line and a lot of different stakes on the line that I think is very worrisome and scary. But I do think that this is an important moment in American history. I think it's really indicative of like how powerful our voice is and how powerful we are as a collective when we vote and when we use 
the right to vote when, and when we exercise the right to vote properly. I can't say that I'm surprised by the results to be honest. I think I was very shocked and surprised in 2016 but in 2024 I'm, I'm really not shocked because this is the reality of America. While we think we have changed and we have progressed, we're a radically different country and in a lot of ways we are, there's still this underbelly of America that is ugly and that craves going back to a previous version of America that was darker for a lot of Americans. I've been seeing a lot of takes on Instagram and there's a lot of rage and anger, especially towards people who decided to vote third party or people who decided to not vote in this election and I just I do think that like it was not a simple decision for a lot of people because it's like when you have something like genocide involved in the equation it's not simply just a choice of a lesser of two evils this is something that's been going on for over a year now so it's not like this is new or this was a surprise or something that we didn't think was going to happen like we knew this was going to affect the election and certain politicians refused to address that or handle that in their campaigning and these are the consequences so i don't know just another day of america looking like a joke i got this yellow scarf over the summer very much like out of my comfort zone i never wear yellow but i've been obsessed this year with this like shade of baby yellow i feel like it's such a pretty color i also do think that like certain shades of yellow can be very fall and give fall the shade of yellow that i've learned just doesn't really suit me as well is like mustard yellow lighter more like pastel shades of yellow definitely suit me a lot better you know color theory and all that i definitely do wear a lot of color but also sometimes i feel like i definitely gravitate towards like a simple neutral color and it's like basic fits like this where i'm like okay just like add in a, a pop of color with the hijab it's easy to just like add in a, a pop of color you're struggling to add color into your wardrobe studied for three hours straight i mean i did take some breaks but like something about the public library i just can be there for like hours and like time doesn't feel like it's moving they have like really nice cubicles that you can sit in where you're just not distracted at all and i love it it honestly reminds me of like being back in college and being able to just like lock in in moffitt i'm getting hungry now it was about getting that time where i was like doing drills and i'm like I can't focus at this point so I'm gonna go to Target actually because I'm gonna reward myself it's like the end of the week and I kind of want to go get a new book I've been just craving reading a physical read I've been reading the message on my Kindle and that's been nice but I've been just craving a fiction book and none of the fiction books that I have on my TBR are speaking to me I spent 45 minutes last night going through the books on my shelves and I'm just not in the mood to read anything on my shelves and I'm a mood reader so like I cannot read a book that I'm just like not inspired to read or I'm not in the mood to read like I'm also in the middle of reading Tar Baby by Toni Morrison and when I started that I was like very much excited very much in the mood to read it and I don't know this week I just want like a fun fiction book so I think I'm gonna go to Target and honestly just like browse their book section see what they have if i find something great if not it's okay why is everything here romance like respectfully i'm not trying to read miss coho we're leading into red this fall you guys got my red nails matching red top i'm obsessed i actually can't believe it's already november november came by and it's like where is time going i feel like september and october just went by so quickly i don't know where time went before you know it it's gonna be 2025 which is insane i'm actually really excited about this new year i was excited for 2024 for sure because i knew I was graduating like i had this new chapter coming up but i feel like a lot of my excitement going into the new year last year was bundled up with a lot of nerves too like i was excited but i was also nervous and a little bit scared of like what 
this next era and what this next chapter would look like. I feel like this year I'm a lot more settled into my life. I have a clearer understanding of like where I'm going and what direction my life is going in and I'm almost more sure of myself which is weird because I'm not like technically in school and I'm not working a traditional job right now. I feel like I have a lot more clarity about where I'm going and that is always just like a really good feeling alhamdulillah so I feel like going into this new year I'm just excited for 2025 just because I inshallah have like a lot coming that I'm really excited about I feel more settled in things like I just even think about New Year's on New Year's Eve that day in the morning we had just come back from like our trip where we went to the East Coast which was such a fun trip but it's like coming back from that trip and it being new year's and just being thrown into 2024 felt like so jarring it didn't feel like there was like a seamless transition into 2024 i think a few days after new year's day we had people staying over with us for a few days so i didn't really feel like i had done the reflection and like gotten ready for the new year in a way that i usually do and so i feel like i was thrown off a little by the start of 2024 so i'm excited for 2025 and to have that i am going to be traveling in the month of december but it's like not as close to the new year's this time around so that'll be nice to just you know take the time because i feel like the new year's is always an, is always a great time to pause to reflect to journal and to plan out your new year i also just feel like in general this year like i've gone through so much change and like i am only just recently realizing it i think every year i want like change because i do think change is important and like we all crave growth but i do truly feel like 2024 was a year where i changed a lot like i look back or i think back on who i was at the beginning of the, this calendar year and she feels like a different person which i feel like is so nice i definitely didn't expect that and i think especially because like i went back to moving at home like it's weird that i feel like a lot of the changes that I've experienced ironically happened after I graduated and I moved back home. I think because I really did associate being at home with stagnancy, which I do think that sometimes you can get stagnant, like moving back home or just like living in places that are comfortable or that you associate with comfort. It can be easy to, get, to kind of fall into a cycle where you're not really changing and you're not pushing yourself to grow in a different direction. But I do think there are times when moving back to these places can actually push you to change in a positive direction and to grow and to explore things that like when you're in such a stimulating environment like a larger city or a more urban area or a college town that you don't feel like you have the inspiration or the time or the space to actually be able to like work on those things when i was in college like i was truly thriving i was having such an amazing time like i loved my life in school and there are days where I definitely miss it. Two days ago, I was just literally reminiscing on like my time in college. But at the same time, it's like I'm always constantly busy and I'm constantly, I constantly have something that I'm doing or something on my mind that I just didn't really have as much time to like pour into myself and work on myself and think to myself like, what do I truly want to be doing and working on and what where what are the areas in my life that I actually want to grow in and change? And it's funny because I as much as I like hated the pandemic and I hated being quarantined and stuck at home and it was a dark time in the back of my mind or that's how I like think back on like 2020 to 2022. It was also a time where I went through so much growth and I feel like a lot of that came from introspection but a lot of that introspection came because I was spending so much time alone. I had so much quiet time and just like stillness in my life that I didn't really have while I was in college. So I feel like I'm kind of getting that back again but without kind of that feeling of suppression that I experienced like during the pandemic or even during high school. Like I feel a lot more freer and like independent and able to like kind of have my social life and have the projects that I'm working on and like more freedom in my life than back then but also more stillness and quiet and like the space to really just grow and evolve and I feel like that's been really nice so sometimes stillness is okay
don't wanna hurt nobody Did it over, tasted and call me Still got love for your mommy I know you wanna be somebody Even if you gotta leave somebody Honey and I are about to go film some TikToks for Mishwara because we didn't have time to film TikToks at the shoot last weekend just because it was daylight savings. We had no idea. By the time everyone got there and we got started, the sun was going down and we ran out of time. I'm wearing the Demi Green scarf. I need to like iron this because the edges are a little bit wrinkly and we have like our bin of all our scarves. We're gonna go shoot some content. We're just gonna go back to the same location for like consistency, but the drop is in a week, which is insane. Everything's pretty much done. It's just, we're honestly in like the promotion stage of things, but I'm so excited for these scarves to drop. Mm -hmm. 